Ever wonder why one widow looks like she's grieving every day, all day, and the other looks like she's getting ready to party all the time? Well, let's go back in time a bit to the first widow. We all know she's a black widow who only cares about herself and her survival. Right up there with that is how much she loves money and fame. So. When a couple of people came to her and offered a great deal of money to make some of her past crimes go away, she was all ears. When they offered her a chance at her own reality show down the road, she really listened. When they told her that Chris Cornell was going to divorce her and enforce that prenup, she was 100% on board. They provided her with drugs that were much stronger versions of the ones her husband used to take. Vicky's job was to get him hooked again. They told her exactly what to do and how to do it every step of the way. When that first wire transfer hit a relative's bank, she was the most enthusiastic helper ever. She might not have been there to commit the actual crime, but she was part of the conspiracy to kill him and she has had no problems with the money and fame she has received after his death. She is so greedy and so concerned with herself that she never even asks more than a few questions about why anyone would want her husband dead. Contrast her situation with another widow, a widow who became one not that long after the first. She was married to Chester Bennington. She would never have done anything to harm her husband, nothing. Someone could have offered her millions of dollars and she would have said no. Every day, she grieves for her dead husband. She grieves for her family. She also grieves for the people her husband and Chris were trying to help. Her husband was an inspiration to so many troubled youth and teens. Naturally, those people reached out to Chris and Chester when they struggled. About a year or so before his death, he was told by one of the teens that he had been sexually abused. The teen talked about others who had all been abused at the hands of the same group of people. The teen named some names, and Chris knew who some of the people were. In fact, he knew one of them really well. That one is David Geffen, who has been known in the past to make his problems go away permanently. When Chris approached him, Geffen advised him not to pursue things any further and to let the matter drop. It was shortly after that conversation that Chester talked to Chris and told him what the teens had said about his conversation with Geffen. At that point, Chris and Chester spoke to Geffen. This time, they were warned more strongly and threats were made about their careers, which Geffen could destroy. Chris and Chester started interviewing the teens and recording the interviews. No one knows how that information got back to Geffen. Did Chris and Chester send him a video? I've been a huge fan of Chris, and 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 to be able to do this is like this is like we're blessed, you know. And That's I awesome. and it's like when people feel that way, when all the when all the musicians on a tour feel like this is really an opportunity, and it's like we're probably not gonna be able to do this again. Mm -hmm. Is is it, it, you're living in that moment, you're living, you're being present with the fact that like this is a really special thing we get to do, you know. And that's that's like. Um, that's where all the pleasure comes from me, is just like, uh, you know, I'm living out of a, a fantasy. We have really, in my opinion, we have the best fans in the world. We have fans that love other people's music. We have fans that support us no matter what we're doing. Um, they're very enthusiastic. And so the kids in, in, the, in the Lincoln Park Underground, you know, a lot of these kids have been around, you know, they've seen 50 shows. They've seen, you know, they, they go out and they put lay work into like, promoting music for relief or, or, or whatever it is, you know, I'm going out and even telling kids about, you know, my in-store for my clothing line. Like, these kids don't have to do that, you know, they do it because they love it and they, and they love what we do. It's, it, it, it's, it, it means a lot to us that, the, that people are so passionate about our music. Introduction to David Geffen. David Geffen, born on February 21st, 1943, in New York City, is a record and movie producer who co-founded DreamWorks with Steven Spielberg and Jeffrey Katzenberg. 
In addition, Geffen founded multiple other businesses, including Geffen Records, DGC, and the Geffen Film Company. He also contributed to financing popular musicals such as Dream Girls, Little Shop of Horrors, and the immensely profitable Cats. David Geffen, the creator of Asylum Records in the 1970s and Geffen Records in the 1980s, was credited for launching the careers of significant rock musicians such as The Eagles, Guns N' Roses, and Aerosmith. David Geffen traded his company to MCA Records for $550 million after two decades of profitable operations. Currently, his net worth is believed to be approximately $10.6 billion. Aside from being a record business titan and a multi-billionaire, Geffen is also a co-founder of DreamWorks SKG and a notable philanthropist. David Geffen loves luxury yachts. Geffen also possesses the Pelorus, a 115-meter luxurious yacht, in addition to the Rising Sun. Despite not being as massive as the Rising Sun, Geffen's other boat is also among the Earth's most significant. The Pelorus was also less expensive than the Rising Sun, which was said to have cost more than $200 million at that time. The sticker price is not shocking, given the superyacht's unrivaled luxury. Here's an interesting fact. During the COVID-19 epidemic, Geffen and his 45-member crew aboard the Rising Sun self-isolated in the Grenadines. Introduction to the Rising Sun According to Germanische Lloyd Classification Organization guidelines, the Rising Sun yacht is built with a sturdy aluminium superstructure, a displacement steel hull, and teak decks. To move through the sea, the ship uses four MTU 12,061 horsepower diesel engines. The ship's typical cruising speed is 26 knots, while its top speed is 30 knots. The boat is outfitted with zero-pace stabilizers when she's at rest to make it more relaxing and safe in hazardous weather. The rising sun is 453.97 feet long with a beam of 62.34 feet, a draft of 16.08 feet and a gross tonnage of 7,841 tons. Sacom Design developed the inside while Bannenberg and Rowell designed the exterior. Lurson constructed it and it was renovated in 2004 and 2011. It was the sixth largest yacht globally at the time of sale but other recent super yachts have pushed it down to the ninth place. This gigantic yacht requires a staff of 45 people to maintain and run it, and they are accommodated in 30 cabins. The visitors are housed in 8 cabins that may comfortably sleep 16 to 18 people. The boat boasts almost 8,000 square meters of living space, which allows for more significant meeting areas and lots of spots to seek privacy from the multitude of guests. On board the boat, there are five decks and 82 rooms. A spa and gym are luxurious amenities, ensuring that clients do not miss out on their regular fitness regimens. The Rising Sun also has an elevator to transport visitors between the five levels. There is also a helipad on board for convenience so that guests or owners can arrive and leave from any area. In addition, there is a swimming pool for fun in the sun and underwater lighting for superb illumination and a sauna for comfort. The ship also has air conditioning in all 82 rooms, allowing passengers to maintain appropriate room temperatures even on hot days at sea. There is also a tender garage and a cinema large enough to serve all guests for amusement. Lucky guests. Celebrities such as Oprah Winfrey and Beatrice, Princess of York, have visited the Rising Sun, a living area of almost 8,000 square meters spread across five stories and a deck space richly coated in teak. W Magazine reported some of the visitors on Geffen's yacht include Leonardo DiCaprio, Bruce Springsteen, Gail King, Julia Roberts, Mariah Shriver, Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, J.J. Abrams, Martin Short, Diane Sawyer, Diane von Furstenberg, Carly Kloss, Alexis Rose, Peter Harrington Cressman, Jen Meyer, Josh Kushner, and Sir Paul McCartney. Making of the Rising Sun the Rising Sun was the final boat designed by John Bannenberg and one that he would never see finished. Rising Sun offered a return to basics and a last chance to work with Larson's slender destroyer type hull, which had served as the base for Carinthia 5 and Carinthia 6 30 years before. The parallel ceased there. The Rising Sun developed with large structural glass for a clean, stripped-down profile involving Larson and its subcontractors in engineering and technologies. 
Larry Ellison sponsored a variety of studies from several designers before appointing John Bannenberg to develop Rising Sun. None appeared to have the desired impact until John Bannenberg introduced his first study model over a couple of lattes one morning in London. After that, things proceeded swiftly and they struck an agreement in two emails, with no mention of a lawyer. In the early months, John Bannenberg worked on multiple study models, including a massive version forwarded to Lurson and utilized for an introductory presentation conference with the key subcontractors. From his earliest drawing, the basic form did not vary much. One of the overriding elements of his rising sun design was the disclosure of structure, which was most visible in the web frameworks of the superstructure, into which the full height glass panels were placed. The original intention was to have these in barely finished aluminum, but this was later value engineered into a silvery paint finish. Rising Sun's general design provided spacious guest staterooms with direct access to the outdoor side decks, which were shielded from the elements by 45 degree angle indents in the superstructure. There was so much area to work with that the upper deck was dedicated entirely to owner usage. At the same time, a double-height theatre was implanted like the rock of an avocado with the hallway gently arcing around it. Obviously, a basketball court was required. Overall, John Bannenberg's original Rising Sun idea escaped his death entirely unscathed. Like many of his creations, the yacht split opinion and her sheer size, eventually reaching 138 meters, gave even Larry Ellison pause to think. But she is undeniably a Bannenberg original having neatly finished the circle begun by Carinthia 5 and Lurson almost 30 years before.